Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about balancing friction. And this comes from a question from Padoni Rosso, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, who asked, can you talk about balancing friction in RPGs and games? It seems like quite the complex thing to do when the friction points for the player and how they're distributed around the gameplay loop will most likely influence other already complex systems in the game. For example, I'm thinking about pacing, both the storytelling and the alternation of action and non-action phases. I'm also talking about game economy as talked about in the encumbrance video. And the full effect of friction points seems to me like something you can only fully evaluate when the game is all playable, especially when the crossover with those other systems I was referring to earlier is taken into account. Oh wait, there's more. Do you have any trick or story you can tell about this, about how you tackle this problem along your career? That's a good question. It's a very long question. It's kind of a detailed question. I'm going to talk about it. I think I have a relatively simple answer, but some of you aren't going to like implementing it, um, but I will get there. So let's talk about balancing friction. Let me start with first, I already have, I had a video on encumbrance when this person asked the question. Since then, I have another video on encumbrance. So encumbrance part one and part two are linked below. I recommend you look at them because encumbrance is a perfect example of a friction point. Um, and I also have a video on how to balance features, which of course includes features that are included as friction points. What do I mean by friction? I noticed that the person who asked didn't really define what he meant. So I wanna talk about it so everybody's clear on what, what I'm talking about here. Friction is anything that, when you're playing, changes the pace or style or type of gameplay you're involved in. Maybe it slows it down. Maybe it completely interrupts it. This could be anything from you're doing combat, but now you have to solve a puzzle, to... You are exploring, but now you have dialogue with an NPC. To you open a loot container and there's more things in there you can carry, either because of weight or slots or whatever. And you have to stop. And rather than just take all and move on, you have to stop and evaluate what's in this container. What am I carrying? All these are friction points in games. They're places where the pace of the game changes. It slows down, it speeds up, maybe it completely interrupts the player. One person's friction point is another person's challenge and another person's annoyance. So like I mentioned, especially in the Encumbrance Part 2 video, there may not be a way for you to solve a design issue without some people in your player base loving it and some people hating it. In fact, I would say that almost every design feature of note you know yes you could get nitpicky and say well then i think that the name i used on this tiny item that is only in there to serve as a lore deliverance nobody really minded that you're right i'm talking about any major design feature probably has people who love it and hate it and you probably can't come up with something that everyone's going to love so i've mentioned that i've worked with people who seem to have their goal in life, they want all friction points removed. And that's not a bad idea. I've talked about how World, I thought World of Warcraft, coming to World of Warcraft from EverQuest, it felt like they took EverQuest and they sanded a lot of the friction points off. So, you know, you, you couldn't lose your items when you died and you didn't lose um, experience points permanently when you died. Things that EverQuest did that were really harsh, WoW just got rid of them. But I've worked with people who want most or all friction points removed. They don't want ammo in the game. They don't want encumbrance in the game, whether it's weight or inventory limits. They don't want any item restrictions. You know, the, the, the fact that some games have classes and this item is only usable by this class or even games without it. I've made games where you have to have a minimum strength or you have to have a minimum dex in order to use an item. They want all those removed. They want no friction points whatsoever. In the extreme of that, I worked with someone once who only wanted action all the time. In fact, he said, every fight in this game should be a boss fight. 
It shouldn't last. There should be no fight that only lasts 10 seconds. There should be no fight that doesn't have the player strategizing and uh, using their different abilities and having to move. And, and I was like, this is where I first used a phrase and I said it to him. Look, games should have ups and downs. They should have pacing changes. That's why roller coasters are fun and monorails aren't. Because a roller coaster with no up and down is a monorail. People just use monorails for transportation. They don't go, wee, I'm on a monorail. Woohoo. So I think uh, having pay pacing deltas are a good thing. Movies do it. Books do it. Games should do it. Um, now, this can depend on your game genre, though. Um, if you're making a tactical game, all you have is combat. That's all you have. So you try to vary it up. You try to make... Um, different encounters that have different uses of your tactical abilities and have different pacing. Um, but something, combat can be a challenge in an RPG. It's not all you have. You might be solving puzzles or talking to people. In a narrative game, a combat would be an annoyance. <laughs> if you're like, I thought I was gonna just explore and, and talk to people and read stuff. I thought this game was, was sold to me as a narrative game and now I'm fighting? It's so you can't just point to a, a, any particular feature and go, that's a friction point. It depends on the genre. Now, when I originally started thinking about what I wanted to say, I just want to say, oh, by the way, with experience, you will discover that you don't have to wait until your game is fully completed to um, think about friction points and how you're going to balance features. However, even if you don't have experience, I talked about all the stages that games go through. The prototype stage is the first time you can start looking at features and seeing how well they're balanced and what friction points you have. Because a prototype is, it may not look nice, it's a gray box, but a prototype is when you started adding those features in there. And as your prototype gets richer and richer, you can do that evaluation. By the time it becomes a vertical slice, where it's a chunk of the game that looks great, has the features you're gonna ship with. It's just one level, but it's it's something that you can point to and go, this is exactly what the game will be like when we ship. Then you can certainly evaluate friction points in a vertical slice. You do not have to wait until the full game is finished. You don't have to wait until the game ships. You can do it right then. So let me talk to, to you about how I managed friction points, how I thought about them. I have a one word answer to how you can balance them. And that is listen. Okay, bye. Okay, <laughs> let me explain what I mean by that. Because it, what I mean by listen depends on what stage you are in making the game. I really highly recommend you watch the production stages video. Anyway, early on, when you're doing brainstorming and design sessions for the game, listen to the other people who are at those sessions. They're going to bring up things that maybe they're worried about. Hey, we've got a lot of different weapons here with a lot of different ammo. That's a lot of ammo things to juggle. Maybe you reduce the ammo. Maybe you have light, medium, and heavy ammo. You don't go like, you got five millimeter and nine millimeter and 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter. And maybe you just don't need to be that realistic. I, I remember I, I come down on the fun side over the realism side. So early on in brainstorming, listen to the people who are involved. Then later on, as the game comes together, listen to different team members. People might be playing the game. You always have a few people on the team, and I love this, who start playing the game as soon as it comes together. You have some people on the team that won't play it even after it ships. But for the people who are playing it as it comes together, listen to them. You can even ask them questions. Don't wait for them to come to you. If you notice someone's playing the game a lot because you hear them commenting about it, they leave Jira bugs and stuff, ask them, hey, how do you feel about this uh, feature? How do you feel about this system mechanic? Ask them what they think about it and if it they like the challenge or if they're finding it annoying. This is especially true for QA. QA is so important for a game. There's this tug of war with QA. You want to get them on early, but the problem with getting them on early is they get jaded. So a year later, they're ignoring some of the stuff that bothered them early because they're like, well, it's just it's been there for a year. They don't even see it anymore. So it's really important especially as the game comes together, that you listen to your QA and especially QA who are coming on fresh, 
that are you want to get their first reaction to the game. What's their visceral gut reaction to the feature of this game? Where are they getting annoyed by? Um, there are things where telemetry can really help because there are sometimes people won't tell you something, but if you look at telemetry and you look at how people play, where did they go? Where did they die frequently? Where did they quit? If there's some place in the game that's not a hub near a shopkeeper and people are quitting there a lot, you may have a rage quit moment and you may have to look into what's making people not want to play the game. Beyond QA, you can also do this with focus tests. Um, focus testers can help you because they, they're they not professionals. They just tell you, I don't like this. It feels wrong. I don't. Now, this can hurt though if the focus test is put together badly. If, they, if you get together a bunch of people who like shooters and you have them focus test an RPG, you're going to get some bad feedback. But if you get a good focus test of group group together and they're playing your game and they play games like this, you will get some invaluable feedback about places in the game they got confused or annoyed or frustrated. And then finally, after your game ships, look at the reviews. Um, we did this after Outer Worlds. Look at what reviewers frequently mention. If one reviewer mentioned something out of 100, okay. But if 80 of them out of 100 mention it, that's something you want to look at. And those are frequently friction points. Now, some of them aren't. Um, one of the things Outer Worlds, like, one of the complaints was it was too short. Okay, that's something we can work on, but I wouldn't exactly call that a friction point. What you want to look at is people who thought certain items were, there weren't enough of them. They're like, if there's not enough ammo or combat's too frequent or there's a lot of combat with um, what are called... Uh, junkyard i feel it's when you when you have combat against opponents that aren't very interesting but you have a lot of it look for reviews that mention that and then look at the frequency that will tell you what you need to look at in your next game or even a patch or dlc to this game okay i think that's all my advice on friction points uh padone i hope this answers your question and I hope this video and the other videos give you some insight on what you can do on your own game.